What's up, Food 52 family? Millie Pantry here. Today, we're gonna go outside the country. I'm gonna take you to the Caribbean, Jamaica in particular. Today, we're gonna make my version of Jamaican brown stewfish. So now we're gonna prep our fish, but before we get into the fish, we have a pan here, I wanna get it hot. So we're just gonna add some oil to this pan. Simple, right? Okay, so let's get into our fish. So today I have a huge, huge, huge red snapper. This is enough for quite a few people or one hungry, hungry, hungry person. So we're gonna start, we're gonna pat our fish dry with the paper towel. And we do this because we want all of our seasonings to stick, right? Traditionally in Caribbean cultures, they have the fish whole. They eat the eyes, everything. But if you can't find a whole piece of snapper, you can totally get some fillets. And if you can't find snapper, maybe a blue fish will work. Deliciously, maybe some swordfish. Okay, so we have our fish padded nice and dry. Now we're gonna score our fish just so we can get the seasoning all inside. We wanna incorporate as much flavor as possible. Okay. We're gonna season with salt and pepper on the outside and inside the cavity. There we go. And then here I have some jerk seasoning paste. Um, it comes in a jar, you can make it if you would like to. It has scotch bonnet peppers, some scallions, some cloves, some thyme. It's ground up, it has so many wonderful things in it. It smells absolutely delicious. It comes in mild and spicy. It is your preference but do not omit this step, it's super good. We get our paste on here. We're gonna rub it. So now that I feel that our oil is a little hot, we're gonna infuse it with some thyme and garlic. Now we're gonna pan fry our fish. Now be careful, we're gonna do this away from us. A whole piece of snapper you can get at a fish market, but believe it or not, you can actually get this fish frozen. Okay. So the, um, this fish is really big, so what I'm doing is I'm basting some of the oil on top to get the whole entire fish crispy. So now that we seared our fish on both sides, it has a slight opaque color. It's not cooked all the way through. Now let's get into our brown stew sauce for our fish. So here we have some peppers. And I did reserve a couple tablespoons of that oil just so we can saute our vegetables in and it has some of that great flavor from the garlic, the thyme, and the jerk. Some onions, some carrots, and add a little bit of salt to it. And we're gonna saute this until it's nice and tender. So while these vegetables saute, this will be a perfect time to like and subscribe. So now that we cooked down our peppers, onions, and carrots a little bit, because of course we needed some space in this pan, we're gonna add some scallions, some seeded tomatoes, some thyme, another scotch bonnet pepper, pierced, just to release some of the heat. We're not gonna chop it up. See, this is a spicy dish, but you wanna be able to make sure that you can taste the actual fish. You don't want it to a point where it's like, oh my gosh, five alarm fire. Now we're gonna add some garlic. And we're reinforcing the flavors over and over and over again. It's such a flavorful dish. See, so yeah, now I smell that garlic. So I'm gonna add some whole pimento seeds. So pimento seeds are juniper berries. You're not gonna be able to chew on these. So at some point, like when you go to restaurants, like you'll see them whole, you'll just push them to the side. But they have such great flavor and it's very traditional to this dish. So now we have our final ingredients. We're gonna add ketchup, soy sauce, and last, well, second to last, some browning seasoning, AKA burnt sugar. And that adds just such depth of flavor. It's full bodied, 
it's absolutely delicious. I know I keep saying it's absolutely delicious, but you know, that's what makes the dish the dish. That's how it turns brown. And then some water. So now the final step of this dish, we're gonna add our fish back to our saute pan. So I'm spooning the sauce for flavor to get inside those slits that we made. And most importantly, we have to continue to cook the fish all the way through. So this recipe that I wrote, it calls for two fish. However, this fish is so big. This is enough to feed four people. Looks pretty, right? It smells so good. Mm -hmm. So this is looking delicious. It smells great. I did taste it. We do not have to readjust the seasonings in the sauce. Um, I think that we should plate it up right now, maybe with some traditional sides, plantains, rice and peas. I think we should. Let's get into it. So our fish came together in a matter of minutes. You would think a recipe like this will take all day, but it is perfect for any weeknight meal. Okay, so this is the way I would serve it. I'll get me a little bit of rice. Plantain. Let's get into this fish. So the way I would serve this, especially when it's a fish of this magnitude, I would just serve it family style. Everybody can sit at the countertop. Anybody can sit at the dinner table and just go in with their forks and their knives and their spoons and just enjoy a meal together. I'm gonna go in for the taste. I like to eat my rice and my fish together. A little bit of sauce. Oh, so good. Ooh, that's good. Mm-hmm. Listen, I'm hoping that you guys make this recipe. I want you to like, share, drop a comment below, and you can find this recipe on Food 52. Come on, friends, come eat some of this food.